Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, we're about to get started with a growing of business with Nautic um, session here. This session is being done on day one, room one. Hopefully, everybody has an opportunity to join in. As is usual with these particular um, sessions, please take a moment to, in the upper right, at any time, participate in the chat. And if you have any kind of Q&As, we'd love to have you um, ask any kind of questions of our two guests uh, that we have going on today. Um, the two different guests we have, first we have uh, Tone that's come back. Uh, Tone is also with Drop Solid, um, as was with Frederick. Uh, he's a digital strategist out of Belgium, and he's been using Mautic for over two years at this point. Uh, his particular job is focusing on the needs of the customers uh, when working with Drop Solid, and he translates that into some set strategies that work for the customers. And uh, Frederick is an enterprise architect over at Drop Solid. Um, I understand he's been doing it all uh, over over time. Uh, what is it? Developer, project manager, product owner, scrum master. I, I don't know what Frederick doesn't do kind of thing. Very, very enthusiastic, always wants to solve problems. And um, when I asked him uh, how would I introduce, how would he like to be introduced? He said he's a longtime fan of PHP. So I would say he's the first time I've ever met somebody that can actually say they're a fan of PHP. So uh, right on there, I'll give you a, a big one on there, Frederick. So I'm gonna let you guys take it over. And I understand that there's some slides you wanna share. So free, free, feel free to do that. And again, drop any kind of questions that you have in the Q&A section on that tab and we'll swing back to that. So uh, Tone and Frederick, uh, go ahead and take it away. Thanks, David. Okay, let's get started. First of all, thank you everybody for um, joining the session. Um, today we'll talk a bit more about the case, um, how you can grow a business with Matic, um, specific case that we had with a client, and we'll also give an update about uh, it. But let us start first with a brief introduction. Frederick. I'm Frederik Wouters, uh, enterprise architect. Uh, enterprise architect at uh, DropSolid. Uh, try to solve all, all kind of problems, and uh, now more and more looking at the high level how things integrate with the clients for DropSolid. So uh, that's me. Yes, and I'm Tony Geest, um, marketing automation specialist at DropSolid, uh, and together with Frederik and um, Team Strike, the best team at uh, DropSolid. Um, Quick introduction um, to the session. Um, we are DropSolid. We created a seamless integration between Drupal and Matic, um, which allowed the customer for 100% fully automated personalized emails. Um, in this presentation, we will show you how we built it and what we learned from it after a year of it being alive and which adaptations we made and so on. Quickly, Drop Solid. Um, who is Drop Solid? We are a company. Uh, our main goal is to make complex marketing technologies accessible for companies, organizations, governments, and to create the best digital version of their organization. We've existed for nine years. Um, we have around 90 people, mainly based in Belgium, but also spread around to uh, around Europe, uh, partners in three continents, um, and there's also a little bit of a display of, of our different clients. What do we do at RobSolid? This is what um, Frederick will tell you. Uh, at RobSolid, we don't only support our digital experience platform, eh, so we sell a lot of uh, digital experience platforms, but we also do uh, a lot of open source. Most of what we do is open source. Um, and we also therefore provide training in these open source tools, but also do consultancy. Uh, we try to make the open source ecosystem grow in a sustainable manner. Um, and as Frederick mentioned, our main um, tool that we use and that we created is our open digital experience platform. Um, what is the digital experience platform? It can be multiple things, but uh, uh, stack we mostly use is uh, using Drupal as a content management system, Matic as a marketing automation system, and uh, you know me as a customer data platform. A bit more into depth, what do these different parts do? Um, so for the website or CMS part, we always use um, Layout Builder. It's a module that we've contributed on um, in Drupal, um, and it's great to create any layouts in your website with just a few click, uh, a few clicks. It's easy. It's easily integrated with your different tools or platforms that you're currently using. Uh, you can save different 
I save a lot of time with templates. For example, when you create a certain layout of a page, you can save them and reuse them later. Um, it also has the best built-in practicalities, practicalities, for example, for SEO um, and analytics. Um, it's built once, but you can deliver everywhere. And the most important part of it, you can create uh, personal experiences for your clients that boost your conversions. Next to that, we also use marketing automation. It's more spe uh, specifically Matic. You can use Matic to get to know your visitors better, increase your customer lo loyalty, more and better leads through the functionalities of Matic. You can stay relevant. You can also um, yeah, share your content across all channels. And um, the best part of uh, one of the great features about Matic is that it works out of the box uh, with Drupal. And the final um, part of our tech stack is our personalization tool where we use Unomi uh, to personalize all the different digital channels in real time for uh, your visitors. So what does this CDP do? It creates a universal profile of your customers with data it gets from Mautic, from the CRM, from uh, your website, and it gathers all that information to create one uh, customer profile that you can track all the activity of um, through the CDP. Um, so that's the multi-source data collection and uh, it's also capture visitor visitors intents because there is an AI working with it um, that oh, sorry I'm getting a phone call from my mother just declined that um, that captures the visitor intents and predicts what the visitor is most in, um, interested about um, it's also very user friendly um, it's an instant deployment and it's proven that uh, it pr improves the performance of your site or Matic or just your performance as a company in general. Now, that all sounds very fluffy, Don. Uh, I think it, let's get into the depth of things and very concrete or specific mm -hmm. with this client that we have. So our client's name is Inagro. Um, and as you see in the next slide, their Inagro is a, a company that is focused around agriculture. Um, what they do is research and development in agriculture and horticulture. Um, in Belgium, in the Flanders, agriculture is a big thing. Um, as you see, 38,000 jobs are in agri and horticulture. It has a turnover of 17 billion euros. It exports for 30% to outside of Belgium, into Europe, and uh, the the auction that we work with, that Inago works with, is the second biggest auction in Belgium. Um, Inago is also active, and this is important for later on. I'm trying to, we're going to try to immerse you in how this personalization works in Mautic, but therefore you need to know um, how it all works at Inago. And once you understand how this company works, you will understand how we do the personalization later on. Um, so um, Inago is very active in all kinds of um, themes and uh, sectors. You see farming, you see mushrooms, you see Belgian endive, there's strawberries, vegetables, organic produce, dairy farming, stock breeding, um, sampling and analysis, insect farming, open air horticulture, biogas production, aquaculture. And around these topics, there's a lot of content that is being made in the company Inago. So, um, This is also, wait on, go back on, please. Uh, this is also divided in uh, multiple themes. So all this content is in the themes, race selection and cultivation techniques around water, energy, and soil. Ton, I have a lot of background noise there. Um, I don't know what you're sliding, but uh, there's also crop protection. There's nature and environment. There's also smart farming and diversification. So the previous slide showed you a lot of um, sectors that uh, Inagro is active in, and these are the themes that we work around. And this is also the things that our content in the website is tagged with. Uh, later on, this is important because that's also the content that we will be using in the mail uh, so that we can receive personalized in the newsletters. Okay, so the informational mission of Inagro is, consists of four parts. There's articles and publications around all these subjects that I uh, presented to you earlier. There's workshops and lectures around these subjects. There's also demonstrations and field visits. And uh, last but not least, there's the personalized newsletter. And this is what we will focus on today. We will zoom in on this personalized newsletter because it really is the most personalized newsletter that we send out uh, for our customers uh, at the moment. 
What is the challenge with this newsletter? The challenge is that um, we have around 7,000 subscribers that receive around 400 articles per year. And they are uh, focused around 30, 30 different subjects. Um, and there is no time for editors to curate and create emails manually. So the curation is done automatically. Now, I hear you think, yeah, you could just build this in a, in a Drupal system because in Drupal, you can curate the content, put the letters in there, but Drupal loves content, but doesn't love email so much. Mautic loves emails. You could also say, why didn't you do it custom? It used to be custom. It was a .NET system, but as you know, with custom systems, they are more expensive. It was very time consuming to do changes in there and proven software that does exactly what they wanted to do already exists. There is no technological advantage to doing this custom. And not only are these good reasons, but also in the future, as presented by Dries in one of his keynotes, you will see that there is a move, a trend going from people having a custom tailor-made stack where companies have more and more a composable architecture. Now, a composable architecture, what does it mean? It means that you don't have one big monolithic stack, but you have a few dedicated components that are really well tested and isolated and that work together really well. And this is where DropSolid also plays a role. In the center of this graph, you see the DropSolid digital experience platform, where Mautic is a part of this platform, which integrates nicely with SAP, with authentication, with Active Directory, with all the external tools that are available. This is, of course, an example. This is not the diagram specifically for this uh, customer. This is much too high level. In the next graph, you can see a little more into detail. Um, you see that the, an, uh, a member of Inagro will navigate to the web platform, will receive uh, web pages with content, will receive an email from the marketing automation system, the arrow on the bottom left, and the Drupal web platform and the marketing, Mautic marketing automation system need to communicate. We will zoom in on this communication a bit later. There's also a single sign-on because we want customers to be signed in in the web platform and a, a login system does this specific for us. There's also a CRM system where preferences are also saved so the customer managers can take contact with the customers if necessary. Okay. Um, for the next part, why did we choose Modic here? Uh, there are multiple tools um, that you can use for marketing automation, but I think the main reason here is um, Firstly, because Mautic seamlessly integrates with Drupal, uh, but it also has some good functionalities for uh, marketeers. For example, it has great email editing experience um, where you can create newsletters um, and send them out. You can create your own templates and really have the freedom as a marketeer to create those newsletters. Um, you also have great email analytics. It's really easy to track your um, your open rates, your bounce rates, uh, all those that information is within Mautic, and you can also create reports from that. For example, for our for all your newsletters, that you get an overview of the performance over the couple of weeks or months. Um, next up, also campaigns, because uh, as you saw in the slide that Fred showed, Inagro has a lot of information on. Um, channels where they spread information for different clients, one of them being email, but also events is a big part for them. So their whole event flow is also created in Mautic where automated campaigns um, get uh, created um, and people get follow-up emails. Um, Mautic forms are used, so this is all within uh, Mautic for the client. One of the other reasons why we chose Mautic is also because there is an API. And Mautic exposes through the REST API all the required assets that we could integrate with the Drupal or the CRM system so that it was very easy for us to integrate. If you're interested in going uh, more into detail, from the Drupal side, we used the Mautic underscore API module. This is the module that we used. Um, and I'm sorry. I'm mistaking. This is one of the modules that's available and we use the next one. The next one is the Mautic Paragraph module, which we also uh, have worked on at DropSolid. Um, and um, this also exposes the API to your Drupal website so that you can use custom API calls uh, from your systems. Um, and that's not all. I think one of the most important features for the client was that it was linked with their CRM. The client uh, is using Dynamics, uh, Microsoft Dynamics as their CRM, um, and it also seamlessly integrates out of the box uh, with Mautic, so they could all 
would get all their contact data um, in somatic or somatic data into the CRM, um, which was a necessary factor for them. Um, now, next up, how is it built? So how do we create these automated campaigns? I think the first step here is to get your contacts um, straight within Mautic and Drupal. Um, accounts are created in Mautic and the, pref the preference or the taxonomies like um, interested in cows, interested in strawberries, interested in water technology are saved within uh, Drupal. Every um, piece of information is also is already tagged with those um, taxonomy terms in Drupal that, so they can be later on used um, for the emails. Maybe a small addition to that. Um, because we also have the users and the preferences in Drupal, we can also show personalized information in the Drupal screens if you are logged in. That is just as an ad addition to what you're saying. Yeah, indeed. Uh, so this makes it all your contacts are available um, within Mautic. Um, the preference center was originally built in Drupal as well uh, because it was linked to the CRM. But later on, we'll um, show you why, uh, that we changed it. Uh, we're doing it in Mautic at the moment, and we'll also give you the reason why we changed uh, the location of the preference center. Uh, next up for the campaigns, I think also one of the more important parts, uh, Drupal creates campaigns within Drupal um, and also creates those campaigns within Mautic. How does that look or feel like? Um, within Drupal, you can say, okay, I want the newsletter campaign um, with a certain, uh, that takes a copy of an existing Mautic campaign. So for example, campaign IDD, uh, ID10, um, you can give a campaign start date and a campaign end date. And what this does is it automatically generates campaigns in Drupal that are also generated um, in Mautic. Small addition here. Uh, this is interesting because then you can also link your content to a specific campaign so that it will be, you can also plan content into future campaigns this way. Right? If you keep the campaigns only on Mautic and the content only on the Drupal site, you have no link to these mm -hmm. data points. If you combine and you have the campaigns also available in Drupal, then you can say, put this content in this campaign and you can plan ahead. Indeed, what Drupal also does is um, they only take the articles or information that needs to be emailed to the client between the starting and the end date of the campaigns. For example, here it's a period of a couple of days, um, so we only take that content um, here. Um, and as I said, you can copy the campaign from an existing multi campaign and it will be automatically generated over there as well. Um, how does an overview look like? You can see, for example, here, these are all the campaigns that are being uh, generated. Um, you can see the different periods from the 23rd of August until 29th. And you also have a link that goes straight on to the Mautic site, uh, where you will be able to see your campaign uh, within Mautic, which looks like this. So for an editor, uh, it's quite seamless. They go to Drupal, they link to the Mautic, and they, they go over the multiple systems without really uh, experiencing borders or, or, or uh, trouble. Um, and similarly, we also did this for the segments. Yeah? So in, in Drupal, you have the, the, all these specific teams or comp things that um, the content is tagged with. You also have the teams that the company works with, for example, uh, horticulture, water culture, all these uh, specific things. And these are managed in Drupal and automatically flow to Mautic. And so there's a synchronization there that we use. Um, this is a screen that we created in, um, in uh, Drupal so that it can be automatically imported. And this way, the moment you save a uh, taxonomy term, an editor saves a new a new taxonomy term, a new uh, strawberries or a specific type of strawberries in the system and content can be linked to that. Uh, it will also be automatically created in Mautic. Uh, so you can go to the next slide. So you will see here in my segments that it's automatically added to the segment list. Um, and then let's go to the more advanced things uh, because we, all, we have in this Drupal all this content linked with all these specific themes. Uh, now it's becoming really interesting. We want to show rich content, personalized content in Mautic based on this bucket of content that we have in Drupal. So what we did in Drupal, this is what we did at first. So we iterated on this because uh, currently we have a more advanced version, more on that later. But the first version was that we created an API, a JSON API 
where all these contents were exposed. And then when I came with my token, so as a as an editor in uh, Mautic, as a manager in Mautic, um, the moment my mail is sent, we will go and fetch the personalized content for my user. So this means that the moment uh, Mautic sends all these mails, it will do a lot of API calls for all the specific users and get the content for this specific user. And so we will find all the content for this campaign with this and this and these preferences, and it will give me the content related to Frederick Prada, so my personalized content. Uh, it looks like this in the email editor. Uh, so here you see there's personal events, general news, and personal news. And what this does is for each of these tokens, it will do an API call to get my personal events, my personal news, and my uh, and also the general news. So these are three separate API calls. And these tokens, uh, we have some code for that that the backend resolves them to uh, content that is then injected into the mail. Uh, how does it look? Well, it looks like this. Uh, this was the first version of it. It's not very readable, I see, but it's also not so important. Uh, I, I'll just read it out loud. There's um, the number of the news article, there's the label, the type, which is news, and then there's the HTML that we embed. So you can see that, the, uh, that there's just some green HTML that we embed. On the output side, this is really cool. Why? Because every mail is unique. It, it makes so that when I receive a newsletter, it will be based on my personal preferences because I like strawberries, I like kiwi fruit, and I maybe like cherries, and I will receive a totally different newsletter than Ton, who, for example, like cows or goat milk or sheep. And the content will be totally different. Even the events will be different, the agenda will be different, and uh, all the content will be different. I think, Ton, when the stars align, that this is the moment for a live demo, Yes, indeed. Um, we're going to quickly show you how it looks in Mautic. Um, so we have my contact profile, Tom Geest, um, and we will, when we will have a look at my profile, we can see all the different segments. Um, personally, I'm... Tom, could you increase the size a little bit? Yes. Thank you. Better? Okay. So you can see all the different segments that I'm in. Um, so... Personally, I'm in all the segments at the moment, but when you will have a look at the newsletter, you pull it up here, here are different newsletters that we've sent out, for example, on the one of the 29th of April, and we'll check it out here. Okay. It's our dynamic um, template, and we can see um, the the end users can also add content themselves, but in this uh, email, they added personal events, crisis news, personal news, and general news. So this way, the content that you see here is something that they put in manually that everyone should be able to see, um, but all the other content gets generated from this email. Um, when I received this email, it looked a little bit different because there was more content in this. Um, the first part is, for example, the crisis news, and then, and then the news, um, fitted for the clients based on their preferences. I'm interested in grass, so I get an email, uh, an article about grass and every other interesting article for me. Okay. Um, and that's how we managed to send out around 7,000 unique personalized and fully automated uh, newsletters each week. Um, as but, it goes, uh, uh, like it's always like that, there are sometimes issues. And when you start, there's always some, some trouble along the way. So we learned, uh, this is what we're doing here, sharing our learnings. And Don has a lot of them because he's he's in charge of this project. He had like the, the different, the difficult talks with the customer. And this is the interesting part. People pay attention because now is where we like, this. Is, there is a year of learnings in what's coming next. So Don. Yes. Um, what did we add? Um, originally, events were not um, in the newsletter because that's what's not part of the scope of the project, but the client really wanted it. So um, we made the option that events also could get automatically added to the newsletter. Um, this works a little bit different than uh, an article. An article looks like, okay, in this period of time, which new articles are being written um, and which can we send? 
that's not the same with events because if you would do that you would just send the events that are from the past and we don't want that so what do events do they look at the start date of an event and if it's uh, within two weeks from the event it gets automatically sent uh, with the newsletter i have a question to the mm-hmm. form I see on the right side of the screen, is that also the Mautic form of the event? Yes, that's indeed also the Mautic form. So when uh, the event is in the newsletter and the client clicks further on it, they see this uh, Mautic form and they get placed in an automatic campaign where they get the invite, they get the follow-up, um, and the client can send whatever emails. That's really they cool. Place. <laughs> Thank you, Frederick. Um, next up, um, we've also changed the campaign a bit. Um, at the moment, you can also, eh, before, you can only see the Mautic URL and the title of the email of the campaign in Mautic, but now you can also get the URL to the email template so that the content editor also sees uh, this on the Drupal side of things. Um, and before, um, Inagra was obligated to have some um, general news that was being sent out to everyone, uh, but we've changed it because not uh, the general news was not always that interesting and because we really want to focus on the the personal experience the only get emails when you're really interested in it um if there is no interesting content for you this week you don't get an email so not everyone gets an email um, each week only if they're subscribed to a specific segment that's more interesting to them um, the campaign generation has also changed before it was fixed so when a campaign was being created in Drupal, um, it always started out of uh, one email and copied one newsletter. Um, but that gave a lot of problems because you need to understand if you're always starting out with the same email, because you can send it out because it's always dynamic. Um, after a couple of months, we had one email that was being sent out 100,000 times, for example, and you don't really have the statistics that you need. You can check it but it's not an ideal way of working so what we did um, we changed the setup of this um, project and now um, each week a new email gets generated so the client can do more follow-up about the statistics about the email and it's just way more user-friendly they also have a lot more options to generate campaigns for example they can change the starting time of the campaigns whenever they want they can change the starting date of the camp of the campaign at the moment, it's always being sent out on Friday, but you can just change all of that stuff um, here. I think this was one of the most important changes uh, for us because now the statistical side of this project is also um, very good at the moment. And um, as I mentioned, the preference center is now in uh, Mautic. It was just way more convenient to keep track of this in Mautic um, and not in Drupal anymore. Finally, we've cleared the code. Yes. So um, what we also did was uh, change the endpoint because Drupal just provided uh, the articles with some HTML. And now we are providing also the the date and some more metadata. So also the labels that are related to this content. This allows in Mautic for us to cache. So our, our Mautic implementation now caches all this content and it will assemble the email without doing the requests to the backend system the entire time. So this makes your Mautic um, and the sending of the emails in particular much more performant and much more uh, speedy uh, because when you're sending out 7,000 mails and you're doing a request for every mail, yeah, our backend servers got hammered and now they just do one request to fetch all the content that was relevant and it will just smartly um, generate these emails uh, on the fly now without doing requests every time. So this is the structure of the, H, the, of the, the JSON that you see here, not too relevant to go to that, but it illustrates how we change the system. Um, I also saw some questions, Ton. Uh, maybe we can dive into the questions now, if that's okay for you. Yeah, I think we're at the end of the presentation. Yeah, um, so let me read the questions for you and then I can see if you can answer them and uh, if I can help you with it. Is that good for you? That's fine. Okay, so the first question, uh, by the way, if other people have uh, more questions, I see there's uh, around 30 people in the session. There's only one person that has put some questions in the Q&A. Don't hesitate to put your questions in the Q&A as well. Uh, we will try to answer them. So uh, go wild. But we'll start with Brad because he was already very enthusiastic and uh, we're going to see if he can answer his first question. Can you limit the personalized content people can receive to him? 
Um, at the moment, um, that's not the case because um, the, the client thinks, uh, thinks no. The way the client um, has put this is that every article that someone is subscribed to will be interesting for them. So if you're subscribed to multiple uh, like strawberries, strawberries and uh, pigs, you want to read them both. Everything yeah. is a little uh, a teaser of an article, so the emails are not that long all the time. So um, that's not the case, but it's, it is something that we could add if they would want it. If I remember it correctly, in the first version, there was a hard limit mm -hmm. uh, where we only showed like uh, three or four questions, uh, um, two, three or four articles in a specific category. But I think yeah, if you miss just that one legal article that is relevant for you, uh, you might want to st still see them. Okay, um, then on to the second question. Is there any way to prioritize the client and order in which content is presented, as in next best offer? Um, good question, Brad. Good question indeed. Uh, maybe let me start off by uh, the content. Um, as of today, there is no um, way to prioritize content. Uh, it's just based on based on the different segments um, and based on the taxonomy terms, which content gets shown first. There is, however, crisis content. So, for example, if there is a flood. Um, in somewhere in the west of Flanders, that's the content that gets put on top of it, but it's a different content type. So um, it's an extra tag that needs to be added to yeah. the content. Yeah, so so we, we also created a different token for content that needed to be highlighted if there's like really uh, catastrophic things that we need to put in the highlight, we, we added that, but not something to prioritize on a, on a lower level mm -hmm. at the moment. <laughs> Okay, on to the third question. I see, how does a segment get subscribed? Can that be done with click behavior? Um, it doesn't happen by click behavior because a, a subscriber would need to give their consent to are in Europe and we need to apply to the GDPR laws. So uh, we have to do a double um, opt-in with the clients. They can fill in a form where they're filling their preferences and then we can add them to um, our mailing list. Uh, the clients can add them to their mailing list. Okay. So um, there, was, sorry to... there was also a question, but not in the Q&A part. I was going so, to read that. Uh, so is there a way to assign points for different actions, like points for contributions and different points for downloading actions? Um, if I understand it correctly, this is where you would like say, okay, someone downloads an assets, I will want to give them five points or someone opens an email, I will like to give them one point. Um, this is something that's uh, built out of the box within Motic. Um, it's called the lead scoring model where you can define different actions. For example, someone fills in, fills in a form, I give them 40 points. Someone doesn't read an email, I give them minus one point. So that's something that exists uh, within Motic, yeah. Okay, I saw another question in the Q&A. Can analytics be used to predict content that will be engaging dynamically? Um, with that, I think um, currently we are tracking the clicks on all the content. So the clicks on all the articles in the emails, we're tracking that, but we're not predicting uh, which could be engaging. But if you would write a, a small uh, tool for that based on I think maybe the, the title and the, the body text used that you could do predictions there based on, on uh, how people cl click through on, on previous articles so yeah you could do that you could also mix into that which tags are more um, more so popular than others so yeah but I think for our client this is not really something that um, is in the scope at the moment Gentlemen, that was excellent. Thank you very, very much for that. I, I actually have a question for you. You know, when you're when you're working on a project of this kind of scope, uh, if you had to do it all over again, well, I'm curious what your biggest pain points were, and if you had to start the whole thing over, would you do the same way again? Um, I think uh, the things that we've learned are things you could maybe avoid, but um, most of the things we've that we've learned within this year um, made the, the client very happy and made the, the tool that we've created or the plugin that we've created even better. Um, so I think we got the best learning from 
doing it and just creating the the plugin but i yeah there are some things that you can acknowledge before but i think you always learn best by experience experiencing something yourself i, I think also what is an advantage in in um, how, how we tackle this and how we might redo it is that the client also went for a growing scenario where we we went with a, a basic version with some basic tags and it wasn't too fully featured but it grew we grew the client grew with us in like having more features having the preference center having the connections with the backend systems so we got the chance to to organically or iteratively grew the system uh and i think for now uh this is uh this was a success yeah so then the next question begs what are the big plans for the future then i think the biggest one at the moment is to get this um this Mautic instance updated, any it's already updated, but get uh, the new Mautic email builder uh, active on it. We're still doing some testing. Uh, if it integrates perfectly, off, we might do some small changes because it changes from HTML to MGML. So that's one uh, big uh, challenge. And another one being um, we're looking into creating and to get the data that we collect to uh, Google Data Studio to get an overview from for the client over there. Excellent, excellent. Uh, thank you very, very much for doing this. Absolutely amazing, fascinating, fascinating stuff. Um, I hope that you keep on going with this. I hope the client is really, really happy with what you're doing. It was very, very impressive work there. And I'm sure everybody who's attending here also can find it. Um, so if there's no other questions, I'm gonna wrap up this session here. I hope to see you guys uh, and other folks uh, a little bit later on at some of the other sessions that are going on. But uh, thank you very much for participating in this. And thank you, everybody else, for watching this session. I'll see you soon enough. Yes, thank you. So thanks, thank you very much. Thanks, John. Yeah. Maybe a small closing note. Uh, we will be in the Drop Solid booth after the session. If someone should have more questions uh, related on this specific implementation or on other uh, things related to Mautic and Drupal and uh, Apache Unomi and CRM integration, uh, you can always ask us. So uh, I think Ton and I uh, will be there if I can find it, uh, but that I'll manage. Uh, so uh, don't hesitate to uh, contact us. Uh, happily, happily to answer your questions. All right. Thank you for pointing that out there and uh, excellent presentation. Most well done. All right. Cheers. Bye.